everybody out there in comic book land. My name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don, and I'm here on behalf of Comic Book Click to review the 2016 summer blockbuster Suicide Squad, directed by David Ayer, starring Margot Robbie, Jared Leto, and Will Smith, and a whole host of, of talented men and women who helped put this movie together. And yes, I'm saying talented men and women because I'm going to come right off the cuff and say it. Suicide Squad is good. I know that's what everyone's over here looking for. The overall thumbs up and thumbs down because of all the drama going on with Rotten Tomatoes and all these other sites that can't seem to put a finger on what's going on with DC and their extended universe. I think DC is going in the, direct, the right direction that they should be going on and should have been going on all along because this film is fun, this film is colorful, and it has a whole cast of characters. So let's go ahead and go right in to these cast of characters. We're going to start with Amanda Waller, the boss you do not want to cross. The lady who is so sadistic she goes ahead and plants bombs inside the necks of criminals, threatening them. If they get out of line, boom, their head comes clean off if they don't do what the big boss says. And she has tons to say in this movie. Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis, does a tremendous job in bringing up a level of control to this film because so many crazy personalities, every time she walks onto the set, everyone knows who the boss is. Next after that, I have to mention Deadshot. Will Smith does a tremendous job playing Deadshot, a guy who really isn't that bad of a guy after all. Somebody who gets paid to murder but has a little bit of a soft side and has a daughter on the outside who he wishes to spend the rest of his life with. He wants to go ahead and raise the daughter the way he should, as a normal man should, and when we follow his whole journey through this film, we get our heart tugged at some of the key scenes in which Deadshot plays around with whether or not he really is a bad guy. Obviously, one of the people who headlines this film, Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie, does a tremendous job being Harley Quinn. It's the Harley Quinn we've been waiting for, playful, joking around, we're getting the Mr. J, we get the pudding, we get the hair, we get the outfits. And there's even a great, great shot of the old Alex Ross Harley Quinn cover with the entire outfit, Joker in the tuxedo, and them almost doing a dance to the death. These two who seem to be in some sort of bond forever, a kind of vicious cycle in this film. And I'm talking about her and Jared Leto's Joker. Now you don't go around playing the brand new Joker without a bit of controversy. And I'll say myself, I don't think I've seen quite enough of this Joker to wrap my head around exactly what Jared Leto was trying to play at. Now he is very dangerous and he is definitely a gangster. Seen a lot of times flocked by a group of men all armed with machine guns and semi-automatic weapons. Joker knows how to get what he wants and in this film he wants his Harley Quinn back. And he goes quite lengths to go ahead and try to get her right under his side. Now besides Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and the Joker, we also get El Diablo, kind of a pacifist, but when he gets the heat turned up, no pun intended, it turns up. Diablo uh, has one of the greatest scenes in the film when he's able to invoke the Aztec god that cursed him with his powers and go toe to toe with the Enchantress's brother. Yes, because not only are they facing Enchantress's brother, they're facing Enchantress herself. Someone thought maybe to be on the Suicide Squad before the actual film came out. She's actually this film's main villain. Somebody that Amanda Waller tried to get underneath her thumb, underneath her control, ends up breaking out and causing havoc all over Midway City. Jai Courtney comes in as Captain Boomerang, a Aussie with a bit of an attitude problem, who has his share of uh, rough edges but does a good job being on the team, doing what he needs to do, and that's throwing those boomerangs. There was even a cool moment where he threw a boomerang with a camera on it. Yeah, an actual camera. Not to be a slouch, killer croc, he has his share of moments, but I found out that him and another character, Katana, really didn't get much in this movie. I wish they had more stuff to play with. Overall, they were entertaining, but they didn't really have meat and bones to their story. It was very, uh, by the book, I guess you could say. By the comic book. This film is worth seeing, if only for the moments of Deadshot, Harley Quinn, and the Joker. And just to see how much of a badass Amanda Waller is. Now, everybody was wondering after Batman v Superman what the next outcome would be for a DC film. And I think DC played it safe, giving us a little bit more 
fluff, a little bit more nice colors. And don't get it twisted, there's a bunch of foul language, there's a bunch of violence in this film, but for some reason, these characters know how to play it up with some light humor, and it made it really fun to watch. Overall, I think we were all just watching this film with the curiosity of where are we going to get the relationship that we've always wanted? Are we going to get our Harley Quinn and Joker mad love and it's here and it's in full effect? Whether we like it or not, Jared Leto and Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie, have an incredibly twisted relationship in this film and it's highlighted from start to finish. And everybody stay for the finish because there's a post credit scene that will definitely do you guys some justice. Perhaps King Cameo in this film is Batfleck himself who comes in like a thief in the night and steals up screen time. And when he showed up every time in the film, my theater gasped with excitement. People want so much more of this Batman. And you got to think with a Batman solo film in the works, we're going to get him and we're going to get him soon. And it can't be soon enough. I can't wait to go back into this universe with all of these crazy characters that DC has allowed us to play with. And that's what I think about this film. If you don't agree, go ahead and leave your comments in the comments section. Don't forget to go to facebook.com slash comic book click to look at all the newest, hottest, greatest, and latest things to come to comic books and comic book media. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don. I'm here on behalf of Comic Book Click, and this has been our Suicide Squad spoilerific review. Remember, you, you are worthy. Just what can